In the mid-70s, Argentina was chaotic. In 1976, following a series of uprisings, the military staged a coup and ousted Isabel Perón. Army General Jorge Videla became de facto president. The takeover that took place in, uh, in March of 76 by the Argentine military was, was really seen by most Argentines as a relief from the chaos left by the Peronist regime. Peron had died, his wife, whose principal advisor was an astrologer, was running the country into the ground. The military came in and to begin with, everybody thought that everything would be okay. The military would do what they'd done in the past, is, is sort of paint things nicely and get things running again and call elections and then democracy would return. And hopefully it would be better this time, but of course this time the military came in with an agenda and the agenda really was to wipe out the left. Of the estimated 30,000 people kidnapped, tortured and murdered, some 500 were new mothers or women who gave birth in the detention centers. Las Abuelas de Plaza de Maggio, or the grandmothers of May Plaza, have been looking for those lost grandchildren ever since. My dad worked in the state telephone company. The military went directly to where he worked, and they captured him when he went out. After that, they went to the house in which he lived with my mom, and they captured her too. Everything started with Oscar's, my father, disappearance in 1976. A few months later, my mother disappeared too. My sister and I witnessed her kidnapping in a park. When I was born, I stayed with my mom for only 20 days. Then I was given to another family. There are no traces of my mom, the same as every pregnant woman and most of the people who went through that detention center. She's disappeared, the same as my dad. Military men, dressed in green, came toward us while my mother hugged us, like she was saying goodbye. I didn't understand why. She tried to protect us by walking away from us while they chased her, so they wouldn't see us. Because if not, we would all have been kidnapped. We were driving as usual, and he suddenly stopped. When he stopped the van to tell me all of this, the first thing he did was burst into tears. And then it was as if he switched places, and a whole other person was in front of me. And he said, no, you're not my biological son. You're adopted. And on top of that, you're the son of a disappeared person. They would wait there for them to have their babies. In this case, they waited for my mom to have me, so we could be given to military families who would steal our identities from us and who tried to delete any traces so our biological families couldn't find us. From there on, our lives changed. We were supposedly abandoned in the streets, that's why the court intervened and sent us to an orphanage, because we didn't have a family. I say this ironically because we did have a family, but they were kidnapped. Imagine meeting with your biological father and brother when you're 29. In my case, I lived all my life as an only child, all that time, those 29 years as an only child. I had to take a DNA analysis. In March 2004, I had proof that I wasn't part of this family that I was the son of two disappeared people, and that my family was looking for me, and that my grandparents were looking for me. If the truth means that you're going to be poorer than before, or you have to resign some things, maybe it hurts, or that something happens to your child or someone you love, there are some realities that do hurt. But I think that it's in this context I prefer the truth rather than not having it. And although it's something that generates sadness, anger, and different feelings, I prefer this reality to the one they made me believe. The grandmothers adopted the form of a very quiet, very respectful search because we were looking for little ones, children. Then we didn't know where they were. The task was a detective's task, a search for facts to see where they were. Every time a grandchild is found, it reinvigorates all the grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo. Para la abuela es un momento de una emoción tremenda. 
For the grandma, it's a moment with tremendous excitement because she's found what she's been looking for for so many years. And furthermore, they look like her son or daughter. Even after the return of democracy, some in Argentina continued to deny that kidnappings, torture, murder, and stealing babies ever took place on a systematic basis. There was no systematic theft of babies. There were only 10 cases, maybe 11, of people who kept the babies because they saw them homeless after a fight. In such cases, it was an act of love. Victoria Donda, found grandchild number 78, bristles at two charges made by those who still support the former government. First, that the grandmothers and their supporters rigged the DNA results. And second, that the majority of the found grandchildren are actors paid to claim their children of the disappeared. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. It's ridiculous to argue with these people. It's as if I tried to have a conversation with someone who denies the Holocaust. You can't discuss things with these people. These people justify the most outrageous horrors of history. Then former Navy officer Adolfo Schilingo admitted that he took part in death flights. And threw drug prisoners out of airplanes into the ocean. For the first time, one of the military responsible for the crimes admitted to have committed crimes. And then, uh, from this moment on, there was no more two versions of history. And the people who committed those crimes in the name of protecting the country were continuing to deny any wrongdoing. They will, at end of day, simply say, every bit of evidence out there is a plant Every bit of information that you've heard is a fake. The science is phony science. The people who cry on cue are actors. And you look there and say, who else believes that? Nearly four decades after the fall of the military regime, Argentines continue to struggle with what happened and with the concept of reconciliation. Stealing babies is a crime, a grave crime of humanity. Time does it solve it. It affects not only that person, but their biological parents and society. How can someone forgive the other when there's still no justice that imparts some kind of penalty or punishment for what has been done? The fight isn't over, but a former Argentine military officer says if you win the minds of the people, you've won the war. He concedes that the abuelas have won the minds of the people.